panel discussion realization of atmanirbhar bharat we request shri sudhendu j sinha advisor infrastructure connectivity transport and electric mobility niti aayog to please join us on stage shri daljeet singh director works dmrc limited to please join us on stage mr rohit lamba vice president sales and marketing and branding head jspl mr pritam ganguly sales and marketing director india region favly transport india and vaptech group mr s k suri ex gm rail coach factory kapoorthala moderator as moderator of the session and shri anil vich director at rights limited shri sudhendu j sena an alumnus of st stephen college delhi did his major in history he has experience of over 29 years in operation infrastructure planning coordination and management at field and policy making levels in indian railways with considerable success and appreciation his performance has been recognized and awarded twice at national level national award for outstanding service ministry of railways government of india and thrice at the ministry level he has also served as dean of indian railway institute of transport management Let's welcome Shri Daljeet Singh, Director DMRC, Experience Work Director, with demonstrated history of working in railroad manufacturing industry, skilled in AutoCAD, highways, transportation, planning, bridge and engineering, strong operation, professional, graduated from M.Tech in civil engineering from IIT Kanpur. Mr. Rohit Lamba, Vice President, Sales and Marketing and Branding Head, JSPL, a C-suite business leader, having. 23 years of leadership experience with diverse roles in retail sales and marketing across varied industries ranging from consumer durables media advertising oil and gas steel and cement mr pritam ganguly sales and marketing director india region favly transport india and webtech group extensive knowledge and proven work experience over 24 years in selling product project solution to railroad transportation and electric electrical switch gear industry a diversified and good academic background in applied sciences and engineering with a flair for marketing and building high performance team and strong consumer relationships also we have shri anil vich director at rights limited with us now we request mr sk suri to kindly moderate the session good afternoon Ladies and gentlemen, am I audible? Yeah. So uh, we'll start the session with a few opening remarks. The railways and metro, they are there to provide good transport infrastructure. And they have taken rapid strides in this direction in the past few years. The railways are going in for massive modernization, expansion of the network, and they are also going in for outsourcing. In the past, the railways used to try to do everything in-house. Today, they have decided that, now they have decided that they'll focus only on areas of their core competence and outsource the rest, which also opens a lot of opportunity for the private entrepreneurs. The dedicated freight corridors, they are coming up. The railways are spending one lakh crores the project is in full swing and likely to be completed in the next one year. The railways were so far manufacturing coaches in mild steel or using copper as a uh, small alloying element, what they call cotton steel. And recently they have decided to switch over to stainless steel coaches. So that is also a very major step which has been taken recently. You must have heard of train 18s. So train 18 is a train set. Currently, all the long distance trains are locomotive haul trains. And train 18 is a train set, which is called Vande Bharat Express. And it has a lot of advantages. The biggest being very fast acceleration and deceleration. So this results in a drastic reduction in the transit time. I think Delhi to Varanasi were the first Train 18 was introduced, reduced the journey time by 3 to 4 hours out of 12 hours. And now in the next 3 years, they will be producing about 400 rakes of Vande Bharat Expresses, which should replace all the important mail and express train. I will now request Mr. Daljeet Singh from DMRC. He will share his thoughts with you. 
simply because DMRC is the biggest success story that we have had. London Tube is rated very highly and DMRC is now quite close to becoming as extensive as the London Metro, London Tube. I think we have, they have touched up to 60 to 70 lakh journeys per day. They are having a headway of about three minutes. They have a punctuality of 99%. So 99% of the time, say you are traveling from Huda city center to Cannot Place. If the scheduled journey time is 45 minutes, you will reach your destination within plus minus 60 seconds. They have introduced two new lines lately which are having driverless operation of the trains for the last one year. And these magenta line and pink lines, they have a capability of having a headway of 90 seconds. So once you reach the station, within 90 seconds you should get the train, which will take you to your destination, which may be 30, 40 kilometers away, within scheduled time plus minus 60 seconds. So what better system can you give to the population? So with these words, I'll request Mr. Daljeet Singh to share his thoughts with you. Thank you. In fact, uh, Delhi Metro operation journey started in 2002 and we have completed 20 years of journey and started with 7 kilometer. Right now, we in operation is somewhere 391 kilometer. You can imagine all this has been done in the different phases, phase one, phase two, phase three. And right now we are in under execution of phase four comprising one, one zero, two kilometer and under which 65 kilometer right now is under execution. Started journey where DMRC was not knowing anything, uh, anything in the sense they were relying on the consultant, in, international consultant. And whatever things which were best suitable for the Indian condition, that's, we have just copied that way. Though it was a first time and what we have found it is finding successful. That over the period of time, with, there were advancement in the technology and we kept the pace with the uh, technology up upgradation. And just he was mentioning that in the phase three, we have reached to level of UTO, which is the ultimate for in the metro for the operation point of view. Now coming straight with Atma Bharat point of view, during these phases we have learnt a lot, but end of the day what we realize is that unless we are not self-reliant, we are not standing on our own foot, we cannot survive for the longer period. And for that point of view, initiation has already been taken in the last three years. One and foremost, we have gone with the indigenous ATS, automatic train supervisory system. And with the collaboration with the BAL, we are hopeful within three, four months, we'll be in a position to implement and commission the, the line one. And once this is there, we wanted to complete till up to, I mean, all the four, three phases, except four and, uh, sorry, uh, nine, seven and eight already, been, which has been done that way. And in the phase four, right now, in the beginning stage only, we'll straightway switch over to this IETS. This is the one of the big achievement. It is a generic type. It can be used in the railway also, for the NCRTC, whatever you knew, but, but it is just a generic, I can tell you. It is a, once it is become that, then we need not to have a, rely on the foreign vendors, where and every four or five years when there is upgradation taking place, we have to go for, go to them. Second, what we have done in house, and we are going that way, is the, Training for the drivers. Again, with the collaboration with the BEL, we have gone with the training for developing the training simulator. And it is very successful what I am seeing because previous to that, every rolling stock vendor has a specific simulator and that was not 
interoperable in that way. Now, this is generic one. Again, it, is, it can be used for any type of rolling stock accordingly. This is the second which we have gone in a big way. Third is a super SCADA. We are still under uh, developing stage and shortly we where all the predictive maintenance, everything will be under one command. And with hope so, with lot of improvement will take place in the on end part that way. Fourth, off late in civil engineering, the track part, the hard hardened rail, till date, 100% is being imported because hard hardened rail is not made in India except for JSPL. But RDSO guideline was there that it should be a proper vendor properly who has executed in India. That has to be the criteria. As a result, even the railways are not able to use the high darn rails. We are slightly now changing the thing and hopefully in phase four, we wanted to go with the, with the Indian vendors also so that that will be a big change in the head hard and drill concept that way. As per small, small innovation already taken place like PSD, the platform screen door, NCRTC already taken that way for making a Atmi work make, uh, through their local vendors and hopefully they plan that it will be successful. We are also trying to do, develop our own, but it's still not to that extent. These are the small things what I'm otherwise a little bothered. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have with us Mr. Sudhendu Jaisena. He is an advisor with Niti Aayog, which is the think tank of the government of India. So we would like him to share his thoughts with you. And I would also like to ask him a small question if he can answer. I believe recently a committee has submitted a report on hyperloop transportation. For the audience, the maglev and hyperloop are the latest developments in the area of transportation. In maglev stands for magnetic levitation. In that you can attain speeds of 500 kilometers an hour. In hyperloop transportation, you can attain speeds up to 1,000 kilometers an hour. So one of the committees has submitted a report in which they have recommended that India should go in for about 100 kilometers of a hyperloop corridor. So this report has been submitted recently, maybe six or seven weeks ago. So in case Mr. Sinha can also enlighten us regarding whether any action has been taken or whether any final view has been taken on that recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was really so nice to listen to my co-panelist on DMRC. <clears throat> you know, if I create a transport map of India, so we have got, uh, and when I see DMRC, when I see Indira Gandhi International Terminal, when I see Mundra Pipawa and JNPT, you know, they appear to be like lighthouses, internationally probably the best. That is what all the, I mean, this is what is accepted by the entire Western audience. And whenever I get a chance to be abroad, I see that they have got all praises for the work that is going on in India. As our Prime Minister says that, during this time of uh, Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa when he says that we have got 25 years of window right in front of us, what he calls Amrit Kal. So that is precisely the time when each and every sector of the country has to pull together to ensure that the India becomes probably the best as far as manufacturing is concerned. Even if you see the manufacturing of the components, the best of the manufacturing, the best of the operations, be it computers, be it, uh, uh, I mean, different aspects of manufacturing, I can name them. All over the world, you will find that the Indian's presence is very, very visible, very, very emphatic over there. 
so what it shows is that we have got the skill we have got the capacity to do it maybe some support some uh, uh, some advanced in ecosystem that is what is required <clears throat> now to make india atmanirbhar to make india internationally manufacturing hub it would be absolutely required that the products that we come out with that is qualitatively the best and that quality i mean to be the best it is not only in terms of quality also but on the cost front also you have got to be globally competitive the moment you start compromising on the quality then the problem starts then then you do not have a say you do not have a position internationally so only when the quality becomes at its best and at the same time of course it is slightly a uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, very very difficult precept that at the same time you have to ensure that the cost component also comes down that is what you become globally competitive now to be to to achieve these two together it is very important that such a manufacturing has to be with a scale and with a size which fortunately india provides the market in india provides that is one number two government of india has initiated a uh, pli schemes in some 14 sectors sunrise sectors and in these 14 sectors some 3 lakh crore rupees close to 3 lakh crore rupees that has been given that has been proposed as incentives to the manufacturers so that they come out with the manufacturing that is internationally the best as far as railways are concerned let me tell you that railways have been harbingers they have been forerunners of innovation technology manufacturing and quality in the country you if you see that the best of the technological breakthroughs in the country they have been brought by railways so be it the computerization of reservation sense uh, systems that has been by the railways that in turn subsequently inspired uaidi to take ahead this aadhar system so these there are set of uh, uh, interventions that have been brought in by railways railways have been kind of technology they have been technology angel for the entire country and this is being taken forward in a still bigger way metro now coming back to metro metro is another such excellence point the revised versions of it neo and light versions they are again going to bring about all the more changes in the in the in in metro to be taken forward as i said and i'm sure that in the audience lot of manufacturers are there lot of representatives from different organizations are there it is very very important that you come out with that quality and you try to achieve that scale and size and let us know that if there is any specific problem with respect to you getting the order of course quality is one thing that cannot be compromised given the same quality if the orders are not coming in if you find that that support is missing out you can always get back to us we are right there to support you now with respect to hyperloop the way moderator mentioned yes the committee has been set up this committee works under the chairmanship of vk saraswat i am the convener of the committee this committee in turns also constituted number of small little sub committees so one of the sub committee has given the reports now the hyperloop is a technology that is uh, uh, that has been developed uh, internationally by very few one virgin hyperloop is one of the successful models that they have that is for a very very small distance even the use case that they have is for a small distance so we got into uh, engagement with them on a very very uh, elaborate scale just to find out its feasibility its doability kind of thing and we are almost uh, at the last leg of coming out with our report which will set the position and let me tell you maybe that at this stage it will not be 
good for me to reveal all the aspects. So one thing is there that we are positive about it. We want that such hyperloop systems, the good systems must be incorporated into India. But yes, there are factors of safety. There are so many operational efficiency issues regarding finance. Those things have to be clarified. And best part is that the standards and specifications, that has also to be clarified. It has to be identified that which will be the kind of base for this hyperloop. Which ministry will be become a home base for it? Because this is one thing that is, uh, you can see that it has got a combination of aviation, aviation principles, as well as the track principles, railways. So whether to bring it to railways, whether to give it to aviation, that is again one of the topics that we are deliberating. But the only thing which I might tell you at this stage is that very soon we'll come out with a very, very clear kind of understanding that how we are going to take Hyperloop forward. And there is additional point that when we bring in this technology, there should not be just a kind of import of technology. It has to be customized. It has to be homegrown at this stage. It must set up that ecosystem of R&D into the country. And when our IITs are the best, when our engineers are the best, they are the ones who are, who are taking it forward in different geographies. Why it is that the same thing cannot be homegrown? Why it is that the high-speed train cannot be homegrown in India? Why it is that the best of the tracks cannot be done within the country? So that, that, uh, that customization, that technological incorporating from outside, that has to be a part of it. So with this, maybe that is the initial intervention. Thank you. Thank you very much. In India, we are also doing a lot of indigenization. Today, we are not, not only producing all the metro coaches within India, we are also exporting them, not to third world countries, but to countries like Australia. So I'm sure that once we decide to move forward, we will rise to the occasion. So I'll bring in Mr. Anil Bij. He is the director, technical rights. Rights is another big success story. They started as a consultancy organization, and they are rated as one of the best consultancy organizations in the world. And now they have diversified into many other areas, including export of rolling stock. And currently, they are handling a very prestigious project of exporting locomotives and coaches to Mozambique. So I like Mr. Anil Vish to share his thoughts with you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. As you know, rights is the export arm for the Indian railways for export of rolling stock primarily, but also services in. Uh, upgradation of track, signaling, and also consultancy studies for uh, various sectors, including highways, ports. And this uh, work we are doing not only in India, but also in about 55 to 60 countries abroad. And a lot of work, if you go to the website of rights, you can uh, get to know of it. Now coming to the specific subject of Aat Nirbhar Bharat today, uh, we were exporting uh, railway production unit manufactured locomotives, coaches, DMUs to old standards, which were the uh, Alco based locomotives plus the uh, mild steel based coaches and DMUs. With uh, Bangladesh in 2017, we exported LHB coaches with uh, Fiat bogies. Then Sri Lanka again, we exported uh, locomotives. Uh, the first lot of 10 locomotives was having uh, power packs totally brought in from EMD USA. But then when we got the next order for Mozambique, six coaches, not only they are uh, the EMD 12 cylinder locomotives manufactured in BLW because we went in for a technology transfer in the year 1997, but uh, we leveraged it for exports now. And the complete locomotive was manufactured in BLW, Banaras Locomotive Works including the bogies also. In fact, the bogies were also developed by our rights in consultation with BLW and RDSO to Cape Gauge Dimensions. Cape Gauge is 1067 mm. So now this opens the whole market, the African market as well as the Southeast Asian market, which is on Cape Gauge as well as Beta Gauge. Then we have also developed DMUs and coaches, stainless steel coaches for the Mozambique market. And we are already getting inquiries from other neighboring countries like Zimbabwe, Zambia, and others. 
now i'll come to the challenge i'll not take much time because we are already running out of time the challenge as uh, the advisor niti also has said is to uh, meet the price because costs in india have gone up particularly in the last one year due to increasing cost of steel so that is where the production units of railways and the private sector manufacturers have to put their heads together to see how the cost can be brought down because as you might be aware lot of products from uh, of indian railways are actually manufactured outside and our production units basically assemble them the electrics come from bhel for instance but some private player could come in we welcome that similarly so what i am trying to say is that we have to not only uh, maintain the quality upgrade the standards but also cut the cost if we have to be internationally competitive today china is there indonesia is there and then even emd is there like in the locomotives market they have recently sent about 40 locomotives to bangladesh so i would suggest that of course in an open forum we cannot discuss all this but let us all in the industry and in the railways and rights put our heads together how we can achieve international standards in quality at the best cost thank you thank you mr vich now we i call upon mr pritam ganguly from fevly transport to addresses this organization is also going great guns they have diversified into lot of areas lot of high tech areas they have a research center which is huge probably the research center in india is bigger than the ones they have abroad and they already are supplying a lot of sophisticated products to indian railways and for metro and i am sure soon enough they will become a global hub so mr pritam ganguly please good afternoon everyone thanks for the kind words and the nice introduction atmanirbhar bharat i think uh, that that's that's a pertinent subject today and it's a great visionary two words it makes us think towards becoming self reliant as a nation and each of us in the room wherever we work have to contribute meaningfully to this directional thought because this will not only make us cost competitive together in the nation it will also generate a lot of employment now coming to where i work waptec corporation uh, you heard my colleagues say in different organizations metro and the rail sector and the consulting sector as mr vid said we are associated uh, with these sectors in more ways than one so our motto in waptec corporation has been to be cost competitive by localizing as much as cost possible develop a strong supply chain a vendor base in india introduce new products following the directives of indian railways and metro rail corporations and bring in the best technology at the right price points at the right time for indian railways uh, we are major suppliers of brake system couplers air conditioning systems pantographs automatic doors and we do this for the electric locomotives and the lhp coaches and now we have developed a number of products for the vande bharat train sets we are also looking at developing new gen products for the electric locomotives like high reach pantographs and air conditioning systems uh, for the cab of the electric locomotives the first intent for us is to bring in the right technology but develop it in india in the engineering centers and also develop not only hardware capabilities but also software val validation capabilities so i am proud to say that when we talk about the metro sector every metro in india has something of waptec in it which means that every metro rolling stock that runs in the country there is some waptec equipment each of those waptec equipment comes with at least 60 to 65% local content which we have been able to achieve over the years with the support from our global centers of competencies and also the indian railways and the delhi metro rail corporation primarily where we have been able to work with companies like alstom bml just to name a few and many others and got in a lot of firsts in terms of technology so in terms of uh, what more we can do for atmanir to to implement the atmanirbhar bharat is what we've taken a bold step in building a very large technology and engineering center in india in bangalore 
which houses about 1,500 people. And there we not only work for projects in India, but also global projects. As we heard some of my colleagues say here, we export. So not only are we supplying for the Indian railways and the metro sector in India, but we are also supplying our subsystems for global projects which companies like Alstom are executing. For example, the Montreal Metro in Canada, the Sydney Metro in Australia, which are all very, very niche and complex projects. So in the interest of time, I will just uh, say that there are two or three important areas where we need to focus on as we take this Atmanirbhar initiative forward. So it's important to have the right vendors, not only who have the capability and capacity, but who have the technical know-how, and who always can manage the reliability challenges in the field. As a result, quality systems and reliability for vendor selection should be a key criteria for the initiative to be practically successful. We also need to see uh, how life cycle costing can be used as an evaluation criteria in tenders. It's a practical proposal because we think that Indian Railways is moving, uh, obviously, from a very capex-oriented model to an opex-oriented model where they want the private sector to participate in these mega projects that have got announced, like the locomotives, 9,000, 12,000 odds per and the Vande Bharat train sets. So it's important to look at the life cycle costing of the product and vendors or suppliers or organizations that support getting in new technology must be able to fulfill this criteria. The second one is to bring the Indian companies and the multinational companies specifically who are building footprint, investing continuously in India to get a level playing field in order to introduce the right technology at the right price. And uh, last but not the least, in trying to do so, we have to be cost competitive. We have to have terms and conditions that are win-win between uh, the authorities and the industry because we need to sustain what we do over long periods of time. Uh, let us hope that all these initiatives that the industry is taking together with the government can make us lead to a situation where we will use rail as the preferred mode of transport in the next five years. And all of us should be striving together as an industry to make rail the safest and the most reliable mode of transport. Thank you. Thank you very much. Despite all the constraints of the Indian Railways procurement systems, you have been growing, you have been doing phenomenally well, and I'm sure you'll continue to do so. So now we have Mr. Rohit Lamba for Jindal Steel and Power. Jindal's in the field of steel, they have become one of the biggest producers in the country. They have taken up many challenges and recently produced head-hardened rails to most stringent specifications. So I'd like Mr. Rohit Lamba to share his thoughts with us. Perhaps he can also tell us what all types of steels continue to be imported and what are your plans to indigenize them? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Suri. Uh, it's indeed a matter of great pleasure and honor for me to be finding myself in such an August gathering as this. And uh, I'm equally delighted to share this platform uh, with my most learned and eminent uh, co-panelists. My commentary would encapsulate around five key points. Number one being when the pandemic hit all of us, uninvited at our doors, the Chinese ports got shut at that point in time. But the consumption and hunger for steel in the overseas market was still there. And that was the first time the world started getting flavor of Indian steel. And since then, there's been no looking back. And I believe that the tempo and that momentum must continue the way it has been going for the last three years. India today is not only a brand to reckon with in terms of domestic steel production, but it has now become a formidable player in the overseas market as well. We at JSP uh, have inherently believed in uh, fostering technology and innovation. 
uh, and that comes from our specialty steel production. Our grades of rails from 1080 to 1175 to head hardened. We always believe that there's enough and more as a manufacturer we can do for the country. But it will come at a certain, uh, you know, self-retrospection. And when I say self-retrospection, what I mean is, is that we must command the ranking of a manufacturer who believes in not only indigenous production, but also end-to-end -end production. So while we make special steel, but you know, we all know that there are a lot of components which are still being imported. Because we somewhere lack being the end-to-end -end manufacturer. So right from destination A to destination Z should be our motto and that should be our goal. In other words, we must aim to be a global supply value chain vendor for the, for the entire world. So unless we become a global supply value chain, world will not really look at the way we would really aspire the world should look at. Number four, there are 835 shipping ports across the world. Out of these, only a handful of them are being used for steel exports from India. Just a handful of them. That opportunity, uh, we believe, is truly latent. And that opportunity, we believe, is, is just about knocking at our doors. If we build a web network across all these 835 shipping ports across the world, and build a caricature to ensure that we supply to these destinations. I think that India's dream of fulfilling 300 million tons of steel production by 2030 would not be far away. I think we will be able to achieve it even before 2030. Last but not the least, we believe that the realization of Atmanirbhar Bharat will happen if we continue to push our pedal on to exports volume, foster exports, and curb imports. I think I will sum up in these five points. Thank you very much. We have covered metro, locomotives, coaches. Let me give you a small update on wagons. Indian railways have recently placed an order for 75,000 wagons. Never before in the history of Indian railways has such a big order been placed. Then we also have containers. Till some time back, the containers were being imported. They were being imported from China because the Chinese government was giving such a high level of subsidy that the landed cost of a container imported from China was less than the cost of raw material for producing a container in India. That has been stopped. And as, as I had mentioned, the dedicated freight corridors, that project is moving at a great speed, likely to be completed in one year. It is expected that a lot of traffic will shift from road to rail. And on the western dedicated freight corridor, that is from Mumbai to Delhi, the traffic will be mainly moving in containers. So it is expected that there will be a huge demand for containers, the demand may be as high as 1 lakh containers in the next 5 years. You have 20 feet containers and 40 feet containers, taking an average price of 5 lakhs per container, this translates into a huge amount of business volume. So those of you who are wanting to expand into the railways or to expand your footprint into railways can also look at container manufacture as one more area of diversification. So with that, we come to the end of uh, input from our side. The audience, which has listened to all of us very patiently, despite being so close to lunchtime, they are most welcome to ask questions. Yeah, please. Thank you. It was uh, so nice to hear on such a wonderful subject. But uh, one of the challenge of uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat is how do the Indian manufacturers who are manufacturing many things 
can actually become a part of it. For example, say I, I actually I am a manufacturing a platform screen door, and um, we have actually displayed it what? here steel, as well. Steel doors, platform screen doors. Platform, platform yeah. screen doors. Yeah. yeah. So now, when we want to be a part under this Atmanirbhar Bharat, we still have to go through the same things like being a, uh, you know, CVV guidelines like we must have certain experiences and that's not going to be there. So how do we come into this mainstream of Atmanirbhar Bharat? I think uh, DMRC may be in best position to respond but what I'll tell you is most of railway tenders, 80% of the quantity has to go to established players, okay, which you are not because you, have, you don't exactly. have the past experience. But the tender committee has the discretion to give orders for 20% of the tendered quantity to people like you, provided they are satisfied that you have the technical know-how to manufacture the product to the requisite quality standards. Okay? Maybe you'd like to add to it? I think you have already given the answer. And this all depends what he is saying that I was just mentioning about the head iron rail for the last 20 years. I think, sorry to excuse, they, are, they wanted to enter in India for the head iron, but railways are not allowing on account of this only. And as a result, you can imagine how much forex we are just wasting on account of this. The same technology, uh, give, uh, continuation of the same thing what you are uh, contemplating. I just mentioned NCRTC already in the process of doing this, the um, Atmanirbhar in this field of this PSD. And basically, there are lot of players are there in the field of hardware. The question arises with the interoperability with the different vendors in the rolling stock signaling system with the, our the indigenous, that is the point I have concerned that way. That's why slightly it will take time and uh, in the phase four we are hoping going in a big way but right now we are not uh, just give you the offhand that this is a specification I will give you in turn to this way. Got it. Thank you, sir. Uh, but just to add a last sentence in this case is uh, we have displayed the product which is going to be complying with any kind of system and I can even install it in existing any line and can show you that. But still, whether I would be allowed to do that even if it at my cost under this Atmanirbhar Bharat? Often I cannot tell because lot of, as he, my moderators were mentioning that lot of things and go for making the eligibility criteria. Not a just like you make a manufacturer and immediately introduce in that. Thank you, sir. If I could just go for an add-on, you know, many a times you try to take it forward on an individual basis while you have got options for consortium and partnerships. So those options can also be exercised. That is one. Number two is that many a times when you manufacture a product and you see that the prices are high, so you have to go for different innovative business solutions. If you come out with certain models where the upfront cost is relatively less and it can be on a subscription, it can be taken forward on a subscription basis, then it becomes accept, uh, acceptable to the, uh, to the person whom you are going to sell it off. That is why I am saying that once you freeze that okay with a lot of engineering and other skills, I cannot further reduce the price. In that is the time when you go in for the business, innovative business models and solutions to, to reduce the upfront price. To come back to your apprehension, you. I am sure you will succeed. All that you have to do is, you have to bid aggressively against whichever tenders are floated, okay? And you have to, you are permitted to upload any number of documents to establish your credibility, okay? The tender committee, which usually comprises the three officers, they have to be satisfied that you have the technical know-how and the capability to be able to produce the product to the requisite quality standards, okay? So you kindly ensure that and you bid aggressively, you will certainly succeed, okay? Thank, Thank you, you. Sir. Uh, The yeah. last thing, I, just, I was not asking for any order right now. It was, uh, since these panelists are there, it is simply that there should be some sort of, a, uh, you know, th a thought process which can bring 
such a manufacturers on the board. That's what. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Rajneesh Bhatia. And uh, my question is again, you know, regarding this uh, Make in India concept, which, uh, you know, government is pushing a lot. To start uh, Make in India, there is a provision, you know, of localization. There's 20% localization and 50% localization criteria, you know, that has been uh, already laid out. How a person can start localizing it? But the problem is, there is no clarity given that what will be considered as a 20% localization and what is 50% localization like that. My uh, request is if some more clarity can be, you know, uh, given right now or maybe a later stage. I think a lot of people may be suffering, like people wanted to start doing localization here, but because of unclarity, they may be, you know, not able to start it. So Actually, the stores, directorate or railway board they, they may be the best agency to clarify on this issue, okay? So, it is headed by additional member stores and under him there are executive directors. One of the executive directors would be dealing with that. So, perhaps if you could contact them, they will be able to further tell you how they will assess the degree of localization. Yeah. Uh, my name is P.K. Agarwal from PPS International. And my basic question is, are we not killing made in India by bringing make in India because we are losing the faith on our own engineers who have already spent a lot of time and developed many things. But now things are coming more and more make in India. That means we are killing made in India. Please. No, I think the two are quite similar. <laughs> it's not similar, sir. I, I just to, I think I was just mentioning some of the products we are doing. Really, we are going in a... 100% Atma Bharat means made in India, not make in India. Make in India is slightly, you go for making availability of land, the, uh, the law and order and other things, the capex and the technology comes from the foreign vendors. With made in India, everything is in-house. For that, what answer is I okay with you? We need to develop startups or have a joint venture with the academic and the industry so that their problems are taken care of and is a continuous process. The seed money or whatever, the already the government of India has given a, um, a lot of incentive for the uh, startups and thus only the metro and the railway, they have to just find the, what are the problems they are facing that way and that can immediately be given to the smaller startups so that it can make a made in India instead of making India. That is it. Yeah, I just wanted to add a private sector perspective. Uh, so, so when we've considered this concept of make in India at Vaptec, uh, our first thought is we need to manufacture in India. So what are the incentives? What, do we really have a business case to manufacture in India? That's the first. While we start manufacturing in India, the second part is, I think, what you were trying to say, is how much can we source from India? And of course, the calculations are calculations, they're clearly laid down. Uh, but our objective is to bring in the global technologies and establish a local supply chain so that we are able to get source the items out of the real bill of materials from India, and that should be maximized. Uh, we're still not there yet because of the complexity of the products, the time for validation, etc. And as one gentleman rightly said, uh, you cannot use local sources from day one. So you need provenness. And that takes a little bit of time. And, uh, but while it takes time, it's possible to do it. We've done it over the last five years and we will continue to do that. So it's not only manufacturing, but also what you need for manufacturing as material, which will be sourced from suppliers from India, is the definition that we follow at Webtech. My name is Sajal Gupta. So, first of all, compliments to the esteemed panelists for uh, uh, throwing light on various vital aspects of the transportation sector. I have a curiosity what Mr. Suri touched upon because now India is uh, intending to go into the uh, infrastructure related to the capacity creation and logistics particularly. Uh, the reefer containers, so Western dedicated freight, freight corridor as we know and uh, recently it has been a COVID saga, so we know the importance of the cold chain, even in foods, even in the vaccine. India is emerging as a vaccine power of the world, as we have all seen. 
So what, what uh, is the policy, if you may just throw some light on the uh, reefer containers, that is the heat and cold, both can be uh, monitored, the climate controlled, this thing. Thank you. No, I think reefer containers have a great uh, potential. We already have been exporting meat in reefer containers to the Middle East, and now there's a feeling that about 30% of the fruit and maybe even the vegetables which we produce in India goes waste because we are not able to transport it fast enough, okay? So therefore, this consciousness is there. There are also organizations. Container Corporation also has a subsidiary and there are some independent organizations also which are dealing with transportation of food products under controlled temperature. So I think the reefer containers certainly have a great future. Okay. Anybody else? Sir, last question. Last question. That so, no? was the last question. No, the audience is great. Uh, you know, <laughs> the, the lunch has been delayed so much, but still they have shown a lot of patience. Chaliye. Last question. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Praveen Pawar, and I'm from Siemens, uh, from Maharashtra. So I completely like the idea of Atmanindra Bharat. And I also agree with all the panelists that best-in-class technology should be given into metros at the best price. Sir, when we bid into tenders, okay, so there is a small challenge uh, in this. When we compare our OEMs pricing with the foreign uh, OEM pricing, the foreign OEMs are always cheaper because of the cost of dollar and euro is all at all time high. So that's why their solution becomes cheaper. And the same solution with same technology if the Indian OEM is giving, so their price is quite high. So I, at that time, the Indian OEM does not get that preference. And secondly, when we talk about doing some joint venture with them, at that time it becomes uh, a fight between them because both of them have got same expertise in the same technology. So it's like who will do what. So I think this is one uh, uh, area where we see uh, some difficulty in addressing the solutions via Indian OEM. So if you can address those issues and give some solutions, then sir, it, it will I be think great, it is sir. Too complex. Maybe we can discuss it separately. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. No issue. Thank you. Okay. So I think with that, with that we come to the end of the session. So I am thankful to all my co-panelists, and I am thankful to the audience who have shown a lot of patience, and they have also interacted very well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone, for this wonderful session. We thank all the panelists and our moderator. Now we request Mr. Rohit Lamba to kindly present the memento to Sri Sudhendu J. Sinha. Thank you so much, sir. We request Mr. Uday Veer Singh, MD Sidwal, to please join us on stage to present the memento to Sri Diljeet Singh. Thank you. We request Ms. Oja Girimori from HYT Engineering to please join us on stage to present the memento to Mr. Rohit Lamba. Thank you so much, sir. We request Mr. Ankush Bhandari, Managing Director, E plus E Electronic, to please join us on stage to present the memento to Mr. Preetam Ganguly. Thank you so much, sir. Can we please request Mr. Nitin Munoth, Managing Director, Technocrat, Call Hair Infrastructure to please join us on stage to present the memento to Shri Anil Vij. Thank you so much, sir. I request Ms. Priyanka Sahu to please join us on stage to present the memento to the moderator of the session, Mr. S.K. Suri.
Thank you so much, everyone, for this very informative session. I request Mr. Rohit Lama to present the memento to Sri Sudhendu J. Sena.